Now what we got here, good morning, is a Lampkin uh, 205 FM modulation meter. It was uh, probably used to set the deviation on your FM transmitter. Uh, it's pretty basic, it just has tuning and um, the way to use the meter there, there's like the tune and then the zero. I mean positive or negative for the tune to zero to center it up. Um, it's got uh, 12 kilohertz or 25 kilohertz deviation. It's an older piece. It's probably made in the 60s. I did a little snooping around. This one's in really good shape, mostly because it had a kind of a spiffy little carrying case. Mostly it tunes from about 25 meg to 400 meg, which is pretty far. <clears throat> it's kind of an interesting piece. I had a bit of a time finding a document on it, but I did stumble onto something eventually. Apparently it's sensitive enough to pick stuff off the air. On the back it's got a ground point uh, antenna jack, there's a little whip antenna and a test point for an oscilloscope and a switch that I gather is kind of a uh, attenuator for the RF section of the thing. There's also a speaker switch up here, although I personally find that kind of annoying there's no volume control for the speaker, it's just there can be a little bit uh, annoying. I'll just wait for it to warm up here a little bit. Hang on. Low fire danger means controlled burns can be executed with reasonable. You said that speaker is just on or off. It's kind of annoying. So, I guess just roughly they're deviating, <coughs> blah, 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 blah. deviating. that's a, uh, one of the NOAA or uh, weather alert transmitters, which is a pretty good trick. That thing's actually pretty far away. Now, it's kind of using me as part of a directional antenna when I stand about here. I think it's at about the. I think it's about the limit of its range, but that's okay. Kind of interesting that apparently this place, this Lampkin place, uh, in the document there, I found out their guarantee is kind of interesting. It just says we want you to be satisfied with the piece of equipment, and we have. They don't have dealers. They sold them directly. They must have made a couple other instruments. And if you don't like it, we give you your money back. That's all there is to it. Kind of try us, like us, or hate us, your choice. It's kind of an interesting philosophy. It's not, not anything like that today, really. The document is reasonably explicit, although it is short a schematic. But that's not necessary for my lampkin, luckily. This thing is really in good shape. It's kind of a weird box. It's plywood, but it's got, uh, it's been painted and it's got 
aluminum, like aluminum L bracket edging <clears throat> all the way around it. I'm gonna guess it was made by the manufacturer. It's part of the reason this thing has survived. It'd be nice if uh, all pieces of test equipment had nice sturdy boxes or cases, although it'd run the hell out of the cost, I'm sure. Even a plastic case would be nice. I some of my better pieces, I go out of my way to actually build some cases for them, just using the same technique. Just make a wood, nice little wood box with. Uh, it's got foam in it, so it doubles as a kind of a shipping container. Um, I've also used this just here, just the past few minutes to tune some of the FM stations, which we won't bother doing because I don't need any YouTube copyright infringement hits from the copyright police. I don't know, just thought I'd show that to you. Kind of an interesting little trinket. I see these from time to time on eBay. And, uh, I assume that there's... It comes with a little snappy antenna, too, that actually there's a hole that just threads through. Although the book here was pretty specific about making an antenna. There's nothing on the bottom other than looks like a power supply and a lot of tubes. It looks it's all made with cloth wiring. It looks pretty nicely made. I think it's got about a half a dozen tubes in it. It's basically a calibrated discriminator. Attenuator, they call it scale switch. There's a place for an oscilloscope output too. I haven't read the book all the way through. It's kind of interesting. I don't fiddle with any comm stuff or business band stuff, so this is pretty superfluous. And I'm sure nowadays this is replaced by uh, something probably a little more sophisticated. Although if you don't have a lot of bucks, <clears throat> it might work just fine. Kind of pops in there. The book was kind of specific about the length of the antenna too. It said it, uh, you know, you could kind of roughly tune it for different ranges. I don't know. It's kind of an interesting piece. It's kind of a wrinkle finish. It's pretty nice. I gather that there were a couple billion of these made. Well, not that billion, but a lot. It's kind of got a coarse tuning and then a fine tuning on the output. There's a zero for the uh, deviation meter, too. Like I said, my only puzzlement about the thing, other than there must have been a tuning chart, too. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, this is just a 1 to 100 scale over here. It's kind of a veneer type thing. Um, is that there's no volume control for the the speaker, so it's a little annoying. There's a quiet button, but it's just a momentary. I'm not sure. I guess when the boss is yelling at you, you can shift it into quiet and actually hear what he's saying. There you go. So there's the Lampkin 205A deviation meter. Take it easy. Have a groovy day.